when you feel like everything you try is failing, like your worth is in the dirt, right? When narcissism and toxic people and just all of it has really worn you down and you feel like you got nothing left to keep going. All right. Perseverance. So my name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you transform your life after narcissism and toxic people have been in it. So let's just talk about this. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep healing. We're going to keep striving for a healthy life, even though this is not easy, you guys. If you have had narcissistic parents, if you've been in a narcissistic relationship, if you have had toxic people around you, you're most likely feeling like your self-worth is pretty low or it's at times has been really low or like you just can't like make it better. Like everything you try fails. Like everyone's up against you and life is pushing against you. It's challenging. It's difficult. Healing from toxic relationships is kind of like that all the time, right? Because every time we're triggered by something that doesn't go right, every time we're triggered by somebody somebody stopping you or um, creating discord or dissonance or like, you know, an againstment towards you every time it feels like things aren't just not going okay it's not just the thing that's not going okay it's the trigger of your entire life that has not gone okay does that make sense and we have had trauma and we have had emotional abuse all of that starts to get into the forefront when we have any little thing in life knock us down right and so that is why focusing on yourself versus the continual education of what is a narcissist, that's why it's important to focus on yourself, okay? But really, when you are triggered, it's learning how to deal with those triggers. So I'm trying to figure out what it is right now that's like getting me all like stirred up. So let's play with this. Let's work it in action, okay? Here's how I'd coach someone if they were looking as distracted and slightly disassociated as I am presenting myself right now, which is not my normal, like, more contained state, right? Here's the thing. I was just out in life, and it was like one thing after another, okay? So it, <laughs> it was just like, what is happening in this world, right? So yes, deep breath, a deep breath. So what I would say to someone is, are you breathing? take a breath. Here's the thing. I am so up in my head when I get triggered. I am so in my thoughts, but I'm not actually in my thoughts. Does that make sense? Like my, my mind is racing, but I'm not actually thinking about anything. I'm letting it run in a triggered way. And so coming back into your body is super important. So take a breath. Notice that you're sitting here. Notice that you have hands and feet and or legs or whatever you got. Notice your body parts. And then take a breath. And in that relaxation of your breath, you can send messages all over the place to your body and send messages all over the place to your awareness of self. In other words, you can calm it down and you can tell yourself, Oh, I was triggered. Thank you, mind. I do go there. That does happen. I do get triggered. And when I am triggered, then, you know, this happens. Okay, that's where I'm at. And so when you're feeling disassociated from the trigger or pulled out of yourself or, or spacey, coming back into, okay, back into the body. Because see, when you come back into your body, your mind has something different to do. And when your mind has something different to do and you're doing it with intention, you're sort of jumping off the neural pathway of the trigger onto a brand new neural pathway of we're going to do it differently. We're going to understand and relate to this trigger differently. We're not going to relate to it by jumping on it and spinning with it. We're going to relate to it by allowing it to be there without any judgment or harshness or criticism. And we're going to, okay, I'm just going to be with it. I'm just going to be with myself while it's happening. What starts to happen is you start to refocus. You start to center. You start to ground. Have you noticed in the last little bit speaking here that I've come right back into a much more steady pace of speech and I've come right back into myself more where I am relating to you 
instead of to my trigger. Does that make sense? That is what happens. That is an example of how to work it. That's one example of how to work it. Okay, and there's more to it, and it goes on and on. Focusing too much attention, too much attention. We do need to understand narcissism. We need the videos. We need the education. We need to understand what the heck is going on with these people, right? However, if we're focusing all our attention there, what are we feeding in our own brain? That that narcissistic person is more important than you right? Which isn't true. So focusing on self is important. And then if what we're doing is focusing on the negative emotions, focusing on the trigger, focusing on how bad we feel, focusing even on how good we feel, feelings, 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 holding onto them so tight that we start to generate energy toward it, emotional and mental energy toward the, the feelings that we're having. And either we get so into it that we are now part of the triggered experience or <laughs> we get so afraid of losing when it, it when it's the good thing, right? Like we get so afraid of losing the good thing that then it becomes negative. So emotions come and they go and we need to kind of ride with it. The problem is when we have had toxic people controlling our emotions. Yes, they do control them, right? Like, yes, we know this. When we've had toxic people manipulating us, it it becomes a game of safety and a game of under of like what am I feeling? What am, what's happening? Was it, right? It becomes an alert system to pay attention to those emotions such a big way. Sometimes people though they don't notice their emotions. There's a lot of survivors who don't or like I don't know what I'm feeling. So many people, however, they know they feel distracted or they feel or they experience distraction they experience frustration anger panic attacks that kind of thing and so that's where their focus goes same exercise applies get into another part of yourself so common you know for people who have had to shut up basically who have been silenced. The keeping on going is important. Finding ways to work the triggers, to work your, your, to have the triggers not be the center of your focus, and then focusing on your healing, whatever that means for you and whatever direction you're taking that for yourself right now. I do want to talk about one thing, and that is there is a peer support group on Facebook. I'm sure you've heard of it, or maybe you haven't. It's in the main description of every video if you need it. It's a free group over on Facebook. If you decide to join, please put something about this channel in the questions so that we can let you in. Knowing where you found us is useful so that we can get you in quicker. See you next time. Take care.